Hi, I'm Matt Cremona. I'm one of the Triton brand champions, and I'm here at the Wessenbert Arboretum taking a green chair making class. We're making something like this, a bent back chair. Hopefully mine ends up looking somewhat similar. So we just finished up day one, and so far this morning we got started by splitting up the log into the blanks for the stretchers using an ax to break up the stock into smaller pieces. And then from there we went over to a chopping block and used the ax further to further refine that shape and get rid of the bulk of the waste, bringing that spindle down to a much closer size. And then from the ax work we'll head over to the shaving horse and use a draw knife to further refine the shape even more to remove as much waste as possible and start bringing that spindle into some of a round shape. So with the blank roughed out into roughly round, I can head over and use this pointy screwdriver thing to make some center marks on the end of the spindles to make mounting between centers and the lathe much easier. Since this is a totally hand tool class, we'll be using a spring pole lathe. So I'll start off by turning the spindle into roughly round using a gouge and then further use the gouge to make the spindle into more of an oblong shape and then all the final refinement is done with a skew chisel. So after day one I have my three spindles for the stretcher of the chair and they are all somewhat similar. <laughs> Day two was great, it was leg day. We went ahead and we made uh, the four legs for our chair. So I decided to do a little bit of a variation where I have, there we go, I have two different sizes. So I have a different size for the, I think the rear legs are gonna be the thicker ones, these ones, and then skinnier ones for the front. And just a very simple kind of tapered spindle design, nothing super crazy. So today was a lot like yesterday. We grabbed a new section of log and split that up into blanks for the spindles, or actually for the legs in this case. We went through with the axe and refined that shape a little further, and then further with the draw knife to get them even closer to round, so if less work and get to the lathe. And then all of the blanks on the lathe get turned to a rough cylinder, and then the shape and profile is refined from there. So day three we're working on the back elements for the chair, so both the spindles and then the back support. In my case I wanted to do a bent back, so I did, did get to do some steam bending which is really cool. So I start out the day kind of the same as the last two days, making more spindles. Uh, this time though my spindles are going to be a lot smaller since these are a lot more fine for the back of the chair. So again starting with a log and an axe, splitting out all the blanks from the round and then taking them over and using the hatchet again to get them roughly down to size and then to the shaving horse once again to further refine them before throwing them on the lathe. So then we did the thing that I was probably most excited about, the steam bending. So I prepped my blank for that by hand planting the rough stun marks off of it, getting it nice and smooth so that way when it's done steam bending it's ready to go and doesn't need much cleanup. Now, the most exciting part is when the actual steam bending happened. The blank went into the steam box for about an hour, got all hot, and then we pulled it out and put it into the form. And that was really fun. It was really cool to be able to see that wood conform to that form, and then how much force it actually took to pull the back all the way around the form. It did take a fair amount of muscle. But it's really cool to see how resilient wood is, its ability to take that much stress without breaking. So that was a really cool experience, and I think that's something I'm going to have to try again when I get back home. So day four, we got started on the seat. Well, I got most of the way through the seat. So this is probably the most fun day so far because it was probably, it started off the most violent. <laughs> so you take your seat blank, and you throw it on the ground and you go at it with an adze to get rid of the majority of the waste for the scoop out for your butt. And then from there you further refine it with the handheld adze, which was a lot of fun. You set the seat blank up in, in like an easel and you just go at it with that until you get the shape 
further refined and roughed out. There we took the seat blank and we threw it into the super jaws and then I went over the surface with the travisher and that further refined the surface and kind of got more of a scoop pattern, a little more even and a little more smooth. I think the travisher was the one tool I enjoyed the most. I've never used them before and it's kind of, it kind of seems like it's a spoke shave but it's a lot easier to use and it really makes uh, coming down into the scoop super, super easy. We also have the option to use a scorp, which didn't really care for as much. I think the Travisher just worked a lot better, at least for me, and was a little more fun to use. And then to clean up all of the marks from the Travisher and further refine the surface and get it all finished up, we switched to using scrapers. So I used a gooseneck scraper to scrape down into the sides or along the sides down into the bottom there to get a really nice seat that's gonna be really comfortable. And of course, I tried it out, so got up on there onto the Super Jaws with my butt to make sure the seat felt good against my bottom. <laughs> and then just a little bit of detail work after all of the profiling was done to clean up around the edges with the hand plane and also add a nice chamfer to the underside of the seat. So the end of day five, and there's actually somewhat of a chair forming here. I can actually sit in this thing, and it's got a little bit of back support, but overall, pretty comfy. Pretty happy with this thing. So we did a lot of stuff today, a lot of little things, and a lot of it was just getting a lot of holes drilled to get all this whole thing assembled. So I started out today with my seat from yesterday, and the first thing to do was a little bit scary, was to drill the holes in the underside of the seat for the legs. So the first thing we did there was we had a, like a sample of legs, attached some blocks so we can kind of figure out exactly what angle we want the legs to be at and what kind of splay and rake angle and all that stuff. And once we had that visualized, you can draw some lines onto the underside of the seat. That's gonna guide us as we go to do the actual drilling. Now the drilling itself was with this really cool kind of homemade drilling guide that sits right on top of the seat and you drill right into it with the T-handle drill. That made the process really easy and pretty much foolproof, which is kind of nice. <laughs> so luckily, that went really well. I didn't drill all the way through the seat. There was enough room there for the bit to stop before I totally blew through that seat, which is what obviously we were most worried about. So after that, I grabbed my legs and I turned the tenons down to their final size so they'll fit into those mortises that we just drilled into the underside of the seat. There's a really cool drilling guide that Paul made as well for that, which made that process really easy. The leg sock just sits right into this cradle and you can just spin the tenon cutter along the end of that leg, creating the perfectly sized tenon for the mortise that we just drilled. So we got the legs all installed and the next step was to start fitting the stretchers. So once I decided how high I wanted the stretchers to be, now came another nerve wracking step, drilling into the legs themselves pretty scary stuff. <laughs> so we marked the hole locations and then we used a little hook guide thing which you'll set to the same height that you want the stretcher to be off the seat and you can use that to help you guide the bit as you're drilling into that leg which once you got through the first one it was pretty straightforward but that first the first one was really kind of scary and I think that's pretty much the whole theme of today was it's pretty scary at first, and then you get a hang of it, and then it's not too bad. But the thought of things going wrong and losing days worth of work, pretty terrifying. So once the holes in the legs were drilled, we can measure the distance between the bottoms of the holes using this adjustable gauge thing. And then once I had the length from that, I can actually measure that length, add a little bit of length to that, transfer that length, to the stretchers, cut the stretchers down to their final length, and then take them over to the tenon cutter and cut the proper size tenons onto the ends of those two stretchers. Once those two holes are drilled, I measure the length between the bottoms of those two holes, transfer that to my center stretcher, cut that center stretcher to length, and then again, turn the tenon onto the end of the stretcher and got that fitting in there. And then the whole base of the chair was assembled and it actually became a chair I could sit on. So next up, I can start working on the back of the chair. So I grabbed the bent back that I had formed a few days ago and got that out of the form. And that was a little hard to get out of there. It was a little tight, so you did have to hammer it out. 
and it was really cool to see that thing come out of the form because it was in that same shape and it is quite strong. It's really hard to flex that thing. So to prep the bow for the actual chair installation, it's a little kind of wonky at this point. So using a couple of framing squares butted up against each other allows you to kind of get a square line based on the center line of the whole bow. And once I have those lines laid out, I can make these final cuts to cut the two ends to their final length. And then from there, I can start forming the tenon on the end of there. First, I knocked off the corners a little bit to make the tenon shaping a little bit easier. And then I used a tenon cutter once again, but freehand this time to form the tenon on the end of the bow. So next up was some more fun layout to get the whole location set for the installation of the bow into the seat. So there we kind of messed around with the spring of the bow to get the, the width of the bow the correct size, get the angle of the lean just right, and get the angle of the approach just right. And then once we had that all laid out, I had my bevel gauge with the correct angle and a line on the seat with the correct um, approach angle. And then we can kind of line all that up by eye and use the drill again to drill the holes at that proper angle and at that proper direction for the bow to be installed perfectly into the seat. And again, another nerve wracking thing, but at least here, all you have to do is keep the angle right because you are drilling a hole all the way through the seat. So busting at the bottom is desirable this time. And luckily, the bow did fit in there nicely. I can give the chair a little spin and give it a little test. So day six to have a fully assembled chair and the first thing to do there is kind of lay things out and get a pattern that I liked. I went with a pattern where I had the three center spindles pretty much parallel in a vertical line and the two outside spindles are kind of tilted off to the side so they're kind of flaring out a little bit to kind of match the angle of the bow. So once I had those all laid out, I could lay out and drill the holes in the seat for the bottom side of the spindles. And to drill those, just use a long auger bit and kind of eyeball from the top side on the bow where I drew a line where the spindles would intersect it so I get the angle right coming down to the seat. And with those drilled, I can flip the whole thing upside down, remove the legs, and then kind of do the same thing drilling into the bow from the bottom side. Again, I had reference marks on the seat so I knew where the spindles would be and relative to that seat area, and I can line up my bit from the seat and intersect that into the correct location on the bow. With the last holes drilled this whole project, I could finally fit the spindles to the back. So there again, I used a extendable thingamabobber to get the total length from the bottom of the two holes that I could transfer to the spindles and then cut those down to their final length. And then from there, I could finalize the tenon size on the two ends. On the bottom side, it was a slightly larger tenon than on the top side. And again, we used the tenon cutter and then this new fancy thing that Paul has to make the smaller tenons on the top side of the spindles. And then a little bit of last final assembly, knocking everything together to get those spindles in the place between the seat and the bow. And at that point, the chair was done-ish and assembled. And I'm gonna kinda end things at this point because I'm gonna take this back with me. Um, all this so I can get it back a lot easier to my place and I'll finish it up and do all the final detail work back in my shop. So this has been an absolutely incredible experience. When I first got here on the first day, I looked at all the chairs that were in the example pile of things we could work on and I had absolutely no clue how they all came together. But now having made just my simple version that I did, all those things don't really seem that complicated or scary at all because I can kind of visualize exactly what the process was to build those chairs. So I think this is just a start for me. I'm definitely going to be building some more chairs in this style in the future. And definitely if you have the opportunity to try one of these classes, it is an absolutely incredible experience. You can learn so much. And especially for me, I had never done almost everything we did this week was totally new to me. And just trying something new and not being afraid of anything is just a really, really fun experience and definitely extremely, extremely valuable.